The first thing we're going to do is drill our pocket hole in the ends of these pieces, which are the rails. So we want to start out with a small piece. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple in there. Now what you, what's going to be interesting about this, as we go to the wider board, we're going to put a multitude of holes in it. Because we're using the pocket screws, we're going to be able to go right from... One step, one step to another. Won't have any time, any downtime for clamping. Now we're ready to put the frame together. If I was putting this frame together using dowels or biscuits, first of all, it had to be incredibly accurate on the layout, but also I'd have to get all the pieces together and then get them into a clamp. Almost a two-man job. But using the pocket screws, I get to deal with each joint individually, and I'm still going to get a joint that is stronger than with the biscuit or with the dowel. Again, that clamp is putting pressure on it to hold the joint where it lines up. And then as you can see, it just sucks it up tight. I want to end up with a very flat joint on the front. Each one of those screws is actually working as a miniature clamp, but it's a clamp that stays with it. Okay, I just got to find my layout. One of the things I really like about this bench clamp is I can pivot it around, work all the way around. And it turns this into a hands-free operation. Now we're getting ready to put these return pieces on. I'm gonna be using some special clamps that are the right angle clamps. I'll get my bench clamp out of the way. These right angle clamps have a peg that's designed to fit in our pocket hole and hold it together until I put the screw in. And what I can do is use a series of these clamps hitting maybe every other hole, every third hole, and put the screws in in between, then just move the clamp along as I go and make that join up. Get some glue on this. I'm going to attach this piece just a slight bit back behind, and then I will take a flush trim router bit and trim that. And the pocket screws are going to push it out just slightly as it goes anyway. So about right there is where I want to be. I can tap it back just a little bit if I need to. Flush that end up. I'll get a second one through here. Go ahead and screw some of those. And I'll pop the clamps out. Put some screws in those holes and I'll be ready to kind of walk my way on up the board. And it would probably take, if I was having to use individual clamps, I'd want to clamp at least every six inches. So it'd take seven, eight clamps at least to do this. And I'm going to be able to do this with these two. And I might bring in a third one of these right angle clamps. But you could even do it with just one because you could just keep moving it a few more times. I'll go ahead and get all these on there. Again, I can adjust that back in just a little bit. And once I've made this joint, because the pocket screws can hold the joint together, I'll be ready to just wipe the glue off the outside 
go right on to doing my flush trim router step and then sanding it and we'll just keep on rolling. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of wipe down that excess glue. We'll be ready to flush trim, sand it, and go on to the next step. Now that we've finished the pilasters, we're ready to work on the center panel section, really the center of attention for the whole mantle. You may have noticed when we were working on the pilaster sections that in all the corners, the moldings are basically a mirror image of each other. That's really important for this look. It shows a lot of planning and craftsmanship. When we designed these sections, we laid that out so that we'd have, be able to get this cut. But even after you've got the right length, you still have to make sure you cut the moldings in the right spot. The way that I do that is by cutting, and this can be any scrap piece, but a piece that's going to fit inside the length that the molding should be. And then I'll take that piece and lay it on the actual piece of molding and just slide it back and forth to where I've got the same match on the profile on each side. It's a lot cheaper to cut a piece of scrap and get the things to fit than it is to be chopping away on an expensive and important piece of molding. All right, it's just dragging a little bit on the way in. That's just the way that I want it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and reproduce this for the other end. And uh, one of the things that we wanna make sure we do too, again, this helps you really get good miter joints. So I'm gonna take my block plane and just slightly put a little bit of back relief on these joints. Okay, now one thing that's a little bit different about this panel is we have put quarter inch plywood on the back instead of three quarter. All the strength is in the frame. Again, these pocket screws are giving me all the strength in the joints, so the plywood on the back really doesn't make any difference. And it's really a depth issue for me because these pieces, when we install it, are going to sit over the frame like this. And the com combination of the depth of these two pieces has to be less than that field piece that we built previously. Okay, I'll go get the other pieces of molding and we'll finish this up. We're starting to work on the actual mantle shelf now. I always like to make my mantle shelves out of plywood. That's because as boards get wider, they're less stable. So if I can use a two pieces of plywood with a molding edge banded to them, I get a much more stable mantle shelf. The trick is getting a piece of molding to attach to this plywood veneer edge and look like it's all one board. That used to really cause us a lot of problems until we discovered that we could pocket screw that piece of wood onto the plywood and get a really tight, long, continuous joint. So I'm gonna go over, and put a series of pocket holes in this piece of plywood, this is the beginning of my mound shell. This bench clamp is gonna allow me to make the attachment between the plywood and the molding. The bench clamp keeps the molding pressed down tight against this metal plate so that when the pocket screws pull downward, they're gonna pull the plywood down tight to the metal plate also, and we should have a just almost perfect alignment that'll need very, very little sanding. Now, I wanna check and make sure that I'm the right length, so I'll get that lined up and come down to the other end and check. Okay, good. We're just 
just where we want to be. So I'll take, put a good bead of glue on this edge, and then we'll start screwing it on. Yeah, I think I put these holes probably about every four inches. As you saw, that thing, the pocket screw pulled things perfectly into alignment as it went in. Just squared things up. Go ahead and catch this one while I'm going. Okay, that's the last screw. Now, you may be looking at this wondering, how are they gonna cover up all those pocket screw holes? Well, that's why I've got a great painter. Just kidding. Actually, what we're gonna do is add another piece of plywood in here so that our mantle shelf will be an inch and a half thick, and that'll take care of all that. Now, let's take a look and see what kind of joint we've got on the front. I wanna tell you, if I can't sand that and get it to look great, I don't need to be doing this for a living anymore. That worked out really well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this material, don't forget to like and subscribe.